Hello, Leo. Welcome to your last horoscope for 2022. Can you imagine? Welcome back. As I said, yes, yes, yes. It is the last lunation that we get to look forward to for this year. And what a year it has been. <laughs> I'm very proud of you, Leo, for all that you've achieved and all that you have come up against and all that you have learned this year. It's been remarkable. And there's going to be a lot more to come. So I think at this lunation, this last moment to have an experience with the moon and to do your spells and to ask for something that you, that you hope to see materialize in your life. This is a nice solo enterprise. I can see it playing out quite beautifully, Leo, and a nice moment of rest and restoration before the next round of work. Capricorn for you rules your sixth house. So on Friday the 23rd of December, which is when this is taking place, I wish for you to come into greater alignment with your body. The sixth house is where we enact ritual and where we think about our health and our responsibilities to the rhythm of the day. We think about the repetition of certain rituals that we need to enact in order to be of optimum health. We think about the animal kingdom and our relationship and interaction with those other ecosystems that exist all around us. We kind of find a moment to ourselves and we recognise how small we are in a greater moving whole and then we recognize how integral we are to the operation of that system. Your health is really important. Leo, I'm sure that you're hyper aware of that. And it's perfect that Capricorn rules this part of your life because there is a stridency to that, isn't there? I imagine that there's lifts that, uh, weights that you can lift or there's a routine that you have in action that takes care of your physical vessel so that you can be of optimum performance. I'm using a lot of work-related language, but that's what Capricorn enjoys. Stridency, responsibility, practicality, all of these things are the embodiment of the Capricorn energy. So at this lunation, right before we go into the festive season, right before we commune with folks that we love, right before we potentially might feel some awkwardness in some of these configurations, I know that not everyone feels a sense of jubilation around this time. For some of us, it can bring up a lamentation in some ways, or there can just be a resistance maybe to the structured festivities you know we're sort of told at this time of the year to spend money on our love our our gestures of love and it's lovely to receive gifts it's lovely to receive well wishes and and connect to points from those that care about you i also have full respect for you if this is a tricky time and so maybe if we look at this lunation as an extra help, extra access to a rhythm, I think that I've said it before, but I like the sixth house and the images of repetition that it brings up. You know, there's a commitment to the repetition to keep going. There's, it's not, it's not a, um, you know, over, overly stimulating night at, at the theatre to run a marathon, is it? You need to commit to the repetition, the endurance is something that comes out in the sixth house. 
And there is pleasure in that, but it's a different kind of pleasure. It's not so um, sensory that the, the, the payoff isn't, uh, the payoff comes in time, doesn't it? And we know that these rhythms keep us regulated. We know that these rhythms help us achieve our highest potential. So if either or, I think it'd be a really great part of the year to have a little reflection time, have a little privacy in your own ritual too, have a little privacy in relationship with your body and with the way that it operates and what it's trying to tell you. Because next year we've got a lot of different things happening. We've got a lot of the outer planets shifting sign and with that is going to bring a movability in our awareness. We're going to recognize a shift. We think about the outer planets in a birth chart. They can often be generational planets. You know, you can pick what generation a person is from based on their Pluto sign, for example. And so this is the initiation of a brand new era that's occurring Pluto is going to be moving in from Capricorn into Aquarius for a few months next year. We'll get a taste of things to come from March until June. They'll retrograde back into Capricorn. And then from 2024, they'll be in Aquarius full time. And so that will mark the changing of the guard. That will mark a change of generation. There'll be a new perspective to our consciousness, a witnessing of dissolution and a regrowth, a re, uh, undergrowth that comes from that destruction. It's big stuff. And <clears throat> Saturn, the planet of boundary and restriction, will be leaving Aquarius as... Pluto enters it. So there is a changing of the guard here, a big one. And if we think about your personal birth chart, this is your seventh house. Aquarius is your seventh house of relationship. So I see some big developments in that part of your life over the next bit of time, Leo. And there's going to be some great opportunity to grow, some great opportunity to learn and to expand Hmm. On expansion, let's have a look at Jupiter as well at this lunation. So the sun and the moon are at one degree of Capricorn and they're squaring with Jupiter in Aries. Aries for you is your ninth house, your house of mind expansion and of travel and publishing and philosophy. So I look forward to further developments in that part of your life next year. Jupiter will transit through Aries and we'll get to bear witness to the results, the effects of Jupiter in that sign for you. There's going to be a lovely moment of potential healing that comes in that place too. Jupiter's going to conjoin with Chiron, the wounded healer, and hopefully aid us in letting go some of that, that unconscious wounding that might be lingering around in your ninth house. I'm not sure what relationship you have with philosophy and with spirituality and there might be something that gets put to bed around this time for you in order for you to expand yourself and to grow and to change and to evolve in your practice, in your language to share and the language that you receive from other folks. At this lunation, I think that we might put that ninth house stuff in our back pocket. We've got Jupiter and we've got that to look forward to. This square, this pressure might be a toing and froing from your daily rhythm, your ritual in Capricorn and the loftier parts of life. You can feel the lingering perhaps of Jupiter as it bursts its way into Aries. The tarot cards that we can talk about are one degree of Capricorn is the two of pentacles. There's a bit of a juggle going on there. There's a bit of a sense of grounding that needs to be established in order for them to keep the balls up in the air. So relate that to your health, relate that to your body. If you've set down your physical practice because, uh, because perhaps the ninth house is growing in, 
in speed. Zero degrees of Aries is the two of wands. That's a portal. That's a gateway into the next magical frontier. So I think that I see these two cards together and I think that before we can engage on this journey, before we move forward and open that door and activate that ninth house and, and, and call in the healing potential of Jupiter and Chiron in that space for us, before we do that, at this lunation, at this new moon in Capricorn, let's focus in on the quieter parts of ourselves. Let's listen to the organism, the meat sack that encapsulates our soul. What do you need to give your body in order for you to keep going? What do you need to enact in repetition, sixth house, ritual, to keep you well fueled? coming up this is a nice one for you leo and it's kind of yeah it's very sensible and i think that that's great capricorn energy there's definitely a feeling of of, of um of limits in capricorn but it's to build the foundations of something it's to sort of it's to start at the base to then begin to climb i like to think about capricorn in terms of definitely a goat but also a unicorn. There's different imagery attached to the sign of Capricorn. There's definitely a mermaid sort of creature as well. There's very, something very mystical about Capricorn. There's a story that, that tells the journey of Capricorn as the goat slowly climbing up, abseiling the mountain to get to the precipice, to get to the apex, the very top of the mountain in that lovely, diligent, repetitious way. We can relate this to your sixth house. When they get to the top, they see heaven. They become enlightened. The two horns of Capricorn merge into one of the unicorn and they experience nirvana up on that mountaintop. I like this imagery for you as your, in your physical routine. Stick with me, Leo. They become enlightened. Lost am I in light supernal, they say. And on that light, I turn my back. Which is to say, the unicorn hears down at the base of the mountain all of the other voices of all of us waiting, looking, longing for enlightenment. You know what Capricorn does? As the unicorn, they step away from the light. They step away from nirvana and they begin the slow abseil down to the base to collect everybody else and to show them what they've found. I like that imagery for Capricorn. And I hope that you can hold that with you as you consider the sign itself and in your relationship, in your ritual, in your, in your communications with Capricorns. That's a nice sentiment that can be uh, sewn in with the responsibility, the practicality, the discipline, the, the stubbornness, you know. There is a seeking quality to Capricorn. And if you can embody that, in your sixth house, embody that in your ritual of exercise, of, of your, your diet, your whatever it is that you do to make yourself feel strong and able. I think that there's a lot of that imagery that you can, you can identify and you can relate to your sixth house. A lot of that beautiful Capricorn story. This is what we should focus on at this new moon, there'll be so much time to experience Jupiter and all of its possibility in your ninth house of publishing and philosophy. There's a brightness to the ninth house and it's quite public. So I dare say that some nice things are going to happen for you. Leo, let's set the foundation. Let's lay the foundation first, right before the holidays, in the vessel, in the body itself. Let's Find our balance 
those two of pentacles before we enter through the portal of the two of wands. <laughs> That's your reading, love. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thank you very much for being here with me. Thank you for liking and subscribing to my work. And thank you for the growth that I've experienced this last year. I am so incredibly grateful to all of you that tune in and listen and that have um, engaged with my work and bought yourself readings. It's been remarkable and I'm committed to the process. And I thank you for that. Um, I would like you to contribute if you can um, have a think about what other forms of learning or readings you'd like to see from me I think that there's a there's a I, there's a wellspring of information that I have and as we journey further into the age of Aquarius as I activate my 11th house at this lunation I want to think about how I can be of best service to everyone so if you've got suggestions as to how I might expand on this work I'd love to hear them from you do send me a message um, sign up to my newsletter and also if you'd like to read my newsletters in retrospect head to the glory box section of my website there's some writings and video work in there too much love to you Leo I adore you and I'll be speaking to you next year. Take care. Bye.